This is One on One with Jasper Cole, Hollywood's bad guy, and so much more. Actor, talent manager, producer, and more. Now he's sitting down with today's top newsmakers from entertainment, politics, pop culture, and beyond. This is One on One with Jasper Cole. All right, all right, all right. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And welcome to One on One with Jasper Cole. This is your host, Mr. Jasper Cole. We are coming to you live from the historical Sunset Gower Studios right here in Hollywood, California. I'm so lucky today. I have both of my producers, so let's give a shout out to the first one, Mr. John Williams. Hello, hello. Hey, buddy. Happy how to are be you? Here. Happy to be here. I'm glad to be here today. <laughs> and also, let's give a big shout out to Mr. Dominic Friesen. Hey, Dominic. Hey are you feeling better? A little bit. I have my sexy, raspy, getting over cold voice. Got that sort of Elizabeth Ashley, Demi Moore. Is it hot? Who's someone current? (laughs) That's going around. Somebody with a career. (laughs) I just aged myself by like 30 years. Well, I'm glad you're here anyway. Thank you. Yes. So everyone, please follow us on Facebook at One on One with Jasper Cole. Twitter, One on One J. Cole. And you can go to my website, jaspercole.com. And when you get to the website, please click on ubnradio.com. And you will see our 25 sponsors that we're so grateful to have. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have a new one, which is efile.com, but we have 24 others. All of us here at One on One with Jasper Cole are proud to announce our 24 affiliate advertisers. And they are all dot coms. InterServer, ZipRecruiter, Hilton Hotels, 3-Day Blinds, Adam and Eve Toys, Bullguard, Prime Slots, Russell Stover, Booking.com, Suzanne Summers, Bath and Beauty, Quest Nutrition, Sur La Tabla, and Extended Stay America. Additionally, we have EUK Host, Canvas World, Cheap Air, 21st Century, Liberty Mutual, Course Smart, Advanced Auto, Fandango, Meet Mindful, Flare Play, and Jewelry.com. Thanks again to all of our wonderful sponsors. And back to the show. Yes, indeed. All right. So please go on and find something you like. Click on it, buy it, and we can keep this fucking show. Oh, did I? I'm sorry for all my listeners who don't like profanity. Freaking show on the air. And who would that be? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, there's been a lot of a uh, lot of stuff in the in the news this week. A it's lot. all about it's the Oscars. All I can say is Aunt Viv and Alexis Arquette. Janet Huber. <laughs> I love, love both of love, them. Love, 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 love. Janet Huber. Well, she's been keeping it real for years because, Absolutely. you know, she wrote a book some years back about her experiences on and, and Fresh you, Prince. you as an actor, what is your take on that? Do you, because her, her whole beef, you know, for people who don't know, was for the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was that the rest of the cast approached Will to do a group negotiation. Will said no and she he felt said, slighted. I got my deal. Y'all better get your own Absolutely. deal. Absolutely. So you as an actor, what is your take on that? Well, well, first of all, I with her, I think that was one of many mm-hmm. things that happened. Absolutely. With him, apparently, because she went on to like, you know, out him and whatever. But but um, well, I don't know. I think uh, I would be upset that he didn't do it. But um, I, I don't think but that. But do you think as an ensemble uh, cast, you know, let's say Friends, for example, where they all banded together you think there's an obligation when you work with your colleagues for so i don't think there's an obligation i think i I, I guess around the same time friends must have just done that Mm -hmm. because she referenced that in the 90s right i can't so it was so fresh maybe oh fresh prince saying but it was so current at the time and she um she tried to do that but when you it was career suicide for her just being so vocal about it because she's really struggled professionally ever since basically going after the the smiths so publicly yeah well the uh, the alleged story beyond that though is that that was just she actually knew about Benny Medina and some of the other situ- alleged oh, situations well, Benny Medina, as you know, the show was based on his life. Paging, and paging Alexis Arquette right, right now. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so we segue to Alexis Arquette, who mm-hmm. released a, uh, a rant about basically saying that Will and Jada are both, you know, in a beard marriage and that they're both gay and they've been living this lie for all these years and, and you know, shut the fuck up and why don't you be authentic? And I, and that, that Will's first marriage ended when his... Ex-wife First walked wife. in on him servicing Mr. Medina. Medina. Correct? Yes. Who is what, who Alexis um, 
alleges is his sugar daddy, right? Now, I don't generally tell stories, but I'm going to tell oh. this one, and you can just do with it what you want. So I used to live on, on a street in, what, uh, in the hills of Hollywood in 95 and 96 on a dead-end street called Marmont Lane. And literally across, you know, it's a narrow street, mm -hmm. like 15 feet wide. My driveway and Will's and Benny Medina's house were right across the street from each other. Wow. So all I know is Will was there all the time, but of course they had a show on the air at the time. Mm -hmm. Um. And I well, and will like to also sunbathe on the deck, oh, really? you know, which I guess you do when you go to your executive producer's house from time to time. And, but question, what time of day was Will there? Uh, all Are we hours. talking about checking in at 10 o'clock at and night? Someone and someone can look, at, they can look up public records. Benny Medina lived on Mar um, Marmont Lane at one time, so... That's that's where he lived. So we're just going to sip our tea and just leave it yeah, right there, Yeah, so right? I'm just going to say that. But, of course, I'm sure all actors and executive producers, they end up at each other's house, you know, Absolutely. sunbathing on the deck. But, you know. Then why haven't you invited John or myself to come sunbathe <laughs> at your house? <laughs> well, you've been to my house in Palm Springs. Um, I've always been fully clothed. At night. I was there for the wedding. So. That's right. Yeah. Dominic missed it. Yeah. But, um, any... <laughs> Oh my shade! <laughs> Speaking of shade, Wendy Williams got renewed till through 2020 today. How yep. you doing? Yeah, mm -hmm. how you doing? But so anyway, my so I think. Um, Speaking of skeletons in the closet. Wow, I think that. Uh, okay, here's my take on it. We all know the Oscars are the, the nominations were was embarrassing that there was no, mm -hmm. but there's not there were no Asians or no Hispanics, there were no Russians, no Indians, no you know. Let's not just leave out. Let's not make it all about African Americans, mm -hmm. but I think it starts with Cheryl Boone Isaacs at the Academy because mm -hmm. if you don't invite more diversity into the Academy, mm -hmm. how are they going to vote? Who, those are the people voting. I mean, Absolutely. they keep talking about like um, uh, uh, Spike Lee was saying, we've got to get more people making decisions at the studios. Correct. Well, you can green light fifty thousand African American movies if. 94% of the voting academy is 67 years old and white or Jewish. Mm -hmm. They're not going to vote for it. Well, and I think that that's what some of the more um, prominent responses are, that the academy does not reflect right. um, But I, Hollywood. I'm going to say this. If Cheryl Boone were white, mm -hmm. the African-Americans that are complaining would be up her ass. But you read Spike Lee's tweets. He starts by saying, with all due respect, that we don't we don't put any responsibility mm -hmm. on you, Miss Isaacs. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, there is responsibility. She's been Absolutely. there since 2013. And there has been no changes. No changes at all. Um, Isn't her husband white? Isn't she married to a white Jewish guy? I'm, I'm not I don't really know. Sure. Again, I'm just going to let that sit on the table. Okay. Because I don't think, I just think if it were, if, you know, if Sally Kirkland or some white woman were the president of the academy... They would not be getting the same pass because you know what I mean. Because well, you got to remember, Sally's also on the board of the Multicultural Motion, Motion Picture Association, so well, I'm there just probably saying would be change. Any Caucasian at this point, a white. I almost think it'd be worse if it were a white male. Male uh, is the president, yeah. but but I don't but, know. But, but you know, in and, in closing, do you think that boycotting the Oscars is really the answer? No, I don't. And really, do people care if Jade and Will don't go to the Oscars? Because I don't think that they do. Does she have a career? And number two, did he really deserve a nomination for his performance in Concussion? No, he did not. I didn't see it. And I mean, I didn't see it. But, no. but you know, I, I my whole thing is... The, the, this, glo the Globe nod was a courtesy. <laughs> well, the, the Globes can be a courtesy for a lot of people. <laughs> Pia Zadora. My crazy roommate. But... um. Pia Sador. But no, my whole thing is you want to have Chris Rock there. You know, Reggie Hudlin is producing it. He's mm -hmm. African American. You want to have Chris Rock there to hopefully say something about mm -hmm. it. But I was thinking, Chris Rock just went through, is going through a divorce from 20 years ago. He needs to work. Why is he going to give up a $350,000 paycheck? Absolutely. To, well, you know, you know in, in my opinion, it's not the Will and Jadids of the world. It's Idris. It's Denzel. It's those are the voices. Straight out of Compton. Well, yeah, that's a whole other issue. Oh, I loved it. No, it, it was a total snub. Those performances yeah. were amazing. Yeah. And I'm Michael B. You, Jordan. No, I mean, you know, we've been on the press tour because we just released the DVD yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, the the cast is really, really disappointed. I mean, obviously well, disappointed. Sure. But they're, they're not 
I mean, a morning show this morning. They said we're not even going to watch the show. Yeah. So, but don't you think? And we'll get to our amazing guest in five seconds because we don't want to keep waiting. But don't you think ultimately it's just going to be great for the ratings because a lot of people are going to watch to see what Chris Rock says or or doesn't say. But let's bring. You know what? Let's get our guest in here so she can weigh in. We first of all, I'm so thrilled because I've. Katie and I have known each other for a long time, and Dominic has known Katie. We are so thrilled to welcome international star Katie Barberi. Hi, gorgeous. Hello. Oh my God. First of all, I got to tell you guys, just hearing your voices, it's just it's a beautiful thing. Oh, Thank bless you. you. I, Look at you. I, I know. I feel like... I, well, ha you, I have... Go ahead. I have missed you both. How are you, my darlings? I, yeah, I want to weigh in. I definitely want to weigh in because <laughs> we just watched Straight Outta Compton last night. Yeah, what did you think? And uh, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I'm confused. Um, yeah, I'm confused about the about the nomination. You know, we always are. Aren't we always right. confused about the nomination? Right. Isn't there always? I mean, isn't the snub uh, always a topic every year? You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh But yeah, I thought I thought it was an extraordinary film. And as a proud SAG member, it is the first of several that I, I have to watch in order to vote. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm happy to have it here. And, uh, I watched it. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And I didn't, and I didn't know. And what's so interesting to me is that, you know, my, myself and, and my fiance, Craig Hurley, we were in LA as teenage actors during that whole NWA mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we loved the music and, but we didn't know everything that was behind it. And it was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was really an extraordinarily, extraordinarily well done film. So, and so Giamatti Kate, rocked it as well. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. So Absolutely Katie, amazing. In, in your opinion, just to answer the question, do you feel that boycotting the Oscars is, is the best option? Or is is what's no. going to work? Yeah. No, no, okay. no, no, no. I think that no. I think that uh, no. I think that things. I be, I believe that there is a time for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and as a, I I am a I am an actress who has been doing this for um, doing this acting thing <laughs> for over thirty years, and I am one of the few uh, actresses in the Latin market who can play a Latina and who has played a Latina many, many times. I'm Mexican. I was born in Mexico. I'm very proud to be a Mexican. Um, but who can also play an Anglo-Saxon like <laughs> Ursula Van Pelt on Every Which Way. Right. And there are many people that I'm sure saw me on that show that had no idea I was Latina because I can do that. I can do that crossover and do that chameleon type work in a way that, um, you know, many of my of my co-stars have not had the opportunity because of stereotyping. <laughs> and, and speaking um, of which, can, can you kind of share yeah. with our audience your your story? Because I mean, it's it's you know, it's Katie knows I've always been fascinated by the fact that she is able to be because she's Mexican American, and a lot of people. IMDb Katie look her up because you you may know her as being a telenovela star but she was a, a child actor actress in Hollywood and continued to act into her early teens and 20s and because she can speak English and Spanish so fluently and without accents on either side I've just always been blown away by your talent and the fact that you've had this such a diverse career mm -hmm. but yeah tell everyone how this all how this whole thing started for you much my darling um i started i started in la when i was 10 i was a child actress and i was absolutely 100 percent anglo-saxon market although at the time and this was the 80s um my name is katie barberi uh it is uh, it's it's a it's a name of italian origin because i have italian uh, I, I have italian blood and you know that i have italian bloodline uh, but I was absolutely born in Mexico, but I, my last name is Barberi. And at the time that people like Salma Hayek and Jennifer Lopez and uh, these wonderful Penelope Cruz and these wonderful uh, Latina actresses that have opened up the market so much for us, at the time I was considered to be very ethnic, uh, being white, blue-eyed, and but my last name was Barberi. And, 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 you know, I had the, the curly Latin hair, and it was just... It was it was like very scary for representation <laughs> in the eighties and whatever. And they were just like we don't, you know. It was it was this very kind of. I think it was. I think there was a post bait Brady Bunch thing mm -hmm. happening, you know. And uh, they just they needed the, the 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 blonde, you know, straight hair type look, and they wanted that sort of very 
um, you know, easy to, to digest, kind of Midwest. She reminds me of Jenny from the farm kind of a thing. Right. Um, uh, but then thanks to Jenny, Jenny, from, uh, Jenny from the block, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, things changed. Uh, thank God. But during that time, uh, I was cast by Televisa, which is the biggest distributor of telenovelas in the world. I was cast by, uh, by Televisa for a project that they wanted to do in English. They did three telenovelas. Now, the telenovela genre is, is different from the, uh, from the American series genre and also from the soap opera genre in the United States. Why? Number one, it's, it's, it's nighttime. It runs uh, Monday through Friday, and it's always prime time. It starts at the prime time hour for the telenovela. starts from at 7 o'clock, goes 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10. Um, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 exactly, three-hour uh, prime time. And they have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It runs from Monday through Friday. And so it's not like a soap opera in the United States because it's it's prime time and also it doesn't go on for 50 years like a lot right. of the soap operas that we grew up watching and that started, you know, live and black and white. This is a genre that they were trying to sell almost 20 years ago and uh, to the United States and I believe the the studio they were trying to sell it to at the time was Fox. Mm -hmm. And so Televisa did an experimental block of telenovelas done in English produced there and the only thing that was different it was a, it was a Mexican crew, it was a Mexican staff, it was Mexican everything Mexican locations, but they brought in an American cast and they brought in an American director and, of course, a writer. In most cases, they were bilingual writers, and they could, they could do the, both of the shows. And they did one for Imperio de Cristal, which was Crystal Empire, and one for Acapulco, Cuerpo y Alma, which was mine, which was Acapulco Bay. And I was cast out of Los Angeles to play the antagonist in that role, and I was very excited because um, my father is from Mexico, and a lot of his family is in Mexico, and I hadn't seen them in many years. I had been working in L.A. all that time pretty steady and hadn't had a chance to go down and visit. So I thought, well, great, you know, I can, I can, I can do this gig and, and, uh, and, you know, and see my family and see Mexico. I haven't seen it in a long time and, uh, you know, kind of immerse myself newly in, in my Mexican culture that I've kind of had to, you know, leave aside because of my work since I was a kid. And uh, lo and behold, I got down there and I shot the telenovela in English. They did not sell to Fox. I believe they were a bit ahead of their time. I'm not sure where they sold to. I think Europe and some, some syndication here in the United States. Um, but the casting director in Mexico, there's one casting director for 18 producers in this studio. His name is Eugenio Cobo, and he said, would you like a contract to do telenovelas here with us in Spanish? And I said, well, yo no hablar muy bien. I barely spoke Spanish. I said, yo no hablar muy bien el español. Yo no saber. <laughs> And he said, uh, he said, well, we have a fantastic uh, diction coach here by the name of Adriana Barraza, who many uh, Latinos know and are very proud of. She was later nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Babel. Yes. She played the, uh, the, the nanny that loses Brad Pitt's kids mm -hmm. in the desert. Mm. Uh, so she was my diction coach, and she was an extraordinary diction coach. We worked together almost every day for six months. And uh, within six months, I was speaking like I was not only born there, but raised there and ready to do this genre. And I shot 12 telenovelas in nine years in Mexico. I also did Equus in theater, and we did a worldwide, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a nationwide tour with that. I did a rock opera version of Dracula. I did I Love You, You're Perfect, Now Change, translated into Spanish in theater. I did several films. I was very, very busy. And they opened up uh, studios here in Miami that were to produce under Televisa, by Televisa here in Miami. And so they were looking to send their exclusive players, because I had a contract with them, uh, to the United States to work on these projects. And they thought, well, who better than, you know, the one that also has an American citizenship? And I had dual citizenship at the time. And, uh, and they, so they sent me back here to Miami, and that's when I started working uh, let's say, again, both markets. And so then I, I shot a couple of projects for Telemundo in Colombia. I did uh, telenovelas here in Miami for both Univision and now Telemundo, who, is, who I'm working with. And eventually I did a project with Nickelodeon Latin America called Grachi. 
that was it was it was done like a telenovela. Check this out. It was done like a telenovela. It was a prime time soap opera, but it was more for teenagers. And I played the mother of kind of the the spoiled witch, the spoiled teenage witch. And uh, we shot 200 episodes of that show. And then Nickelodeon USA decided to do a crossover version of that show for Nickelodeon here in the United States. And myself and an actor by the name of Rafael de la Fuente, who is now on um, on Empire, he plays Michael. Yes. Um, he, he and I were the only ones from the cast of Gracchi that crossed over to the American version. And then Nickelodeon introduced the American version of Gracchi as a primetime soap opera for teenagers on Nickelodeon called Every Which Way, and it would run Monday through Friday Love it. Uh, for <laughs> a, a period of time, of like a month, a month and a half. And so I did end up doing the first telenovela genre here in the United States. It was just almost 20 years later and for Nickelodeon. Wow. So everything, you know, every circle opens and it closes, and I, if I was in the fledgling version. It just happened, you know, way later. You never know. Well, and that's the thing. You, you just never take yourself out of the game, you know. The way, I have this theory, if you just stay around long enough, jobs keep coming. And so 30 years later, you have a new... Oh, no, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. You cannot, you cannot quit. If you want to be in this business, if you love this, if it's your passion, if it's what you, it's, it's what you know you have to do, it's rough. It's a rough business. Yes. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of criticism. There's a lot of scrutiny. And, you know, there's a lot of, of flagrant behavior by, by, you know, everybody involved, you know, because you're not looked at as a human being. You're looked at as a product. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that you have to own. You are your own product. You must sell yourself as your own product. And there's a lot, there's a lot of, it, there's just a lot to deal with and a lot of pressure. But the one thing that I, 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 that I absolutely know for sure, you know, like the Barbara Walters question always is, what do you know for sure? <laughs> if, you, if you stay in this long enough, you will, you will fulfill your, your dreams and your goals. Well, also, you're so blessed right now because not only are you a leading lady and you get to do these great leading sexy parts, but you're a character actors as well. Like Ursula to me, even though she's very glamorous and she's, you know, but she's it's it's character work. <laughs> I mean, you notice I said she's she just is. <laughs> I just left that set there. She but she's glamorous, and it, and if she's not quite glamorous enough, then she'll just make another pair of shoes appear, and that way everything will be resolved. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I, I I and and the thing is, it's important. You know, as 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 an actor, as you're getting as as you progress in your career and in your life, obviously age plays a factor. Yeah. And for the leading lady roles, you're going to be available for a certain amount of time. But as a comedian, you can work forever. Right. And you, you have, have a new a new novella premiering on the 26th, correct, on Telemundo? Yes. Yes. After I completed Every Which Way, we completed season four of Every Which Way and went out like gangbusters. Um, it was fantastic. We were on top of the ratings. And we finished that on the air in June of this year. And then I got a call from a dear friend of mine by the name of Edith Gonzalez, mm -hmm. who uh, was a protagonist of a show that I did with Telemundo seven years ago called Doña Barbara, which is the biggest seller in the international market of Telemundo in the history of its, of its, uh, mm -hmm. of its company. Uh, she called me, and I was at the time writing a project with my, with my fiancé in Colorado at his uh, condominium in Colorado, and he was also editing an independent film that he shot in Chicago. And she called me and she said, I'm going to be shooting a project in Miami with Telemundo, and I would like to know if you would like to work with us again, myself and, and uh, the writer of Doña Barbara, who is Valentina Parraga, who is extraordinary and a dear, dear, dear human being and a, an amazing writer. And I said, are you kidding me? I'd love to. <laughs> So we began the negotiations, and I tested for the role, and uh, we go on the air January 26th, and I'm so excited for everybody to see this project. It's just fantastic. It really does. It has a cast, the likes of which I, I have not worked with in the telenovela genre in a long time. So tell us a little bit um, about your character. Are you I'm so sorry. Are you, so playing, sorry. Go ahead. are you playing a bitch, or is she, is she a good, good girl this time? You know, here's the thing. She doesn't... <laughs> okay. Here, here's the thing. This character is, you know, you know those women that are, the, that are, that are, you know, these women that are biatches, but it's not because 
they are evil as much as they just have absolutely no conscience about them. Mm. They don't realize what they're doing. Right. She has. Uh, she she just doesn't have. I, 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 she is a bit of an airhead. She is a woman who has always had money and who has always been in a, 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 a comfortable position, who finds herself no longer in a comfortable position because of circumstances of her life and flagrant behavior by herself and her husband. And also, uh, she may or may not have acquired a child uh, 17 years prior in an illegal fashion. Wow. So, as is happen, uh, as, as does happen classically in the telenovela genre, uh, at the time when we meet Cynthia Monteverde, who is this character, uh, she is about to be confronted with this past that has always uh, kind of been chasing after her, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and she must tell her son the truth and she must deal with the woman that uh, she may or may not have acquired the child illegally from. And that woman is played by an amazing actress by the name of Vanessa Bauche, who I have wanted to work with uh, since I saw her in the year 2000 in a movie, a Mexican film called uh, Amores Perros, and Amores Perros was directed by uh, González Iñárritu, who is the director of, Rev- uh, of Rev- uh, uh, Rev- Revenant. Revenant, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, exactly, Revenant, and who is, uh, and she was his protagonist in this film. Wow. And uh, his, his female protagonist, and she is now, I am now honored to be her antagonist. And we just went the other day uh, to watch Revenant, and we saw it on, in IMAX, and it was absolutely extraordinary, and it was so wonderful to see her watching her, her director. She was, she was a protagonist of his opera prima. Wow. So um, I am honored. I am honored. And uh, there are other fantastic uh, actors in this, in, this, in this show, just really, really extraordinary performances. Arap Besque, uh, Jorge Luis Pila, uh, Alfredo Huereca, um, just extraordinary, extraordinary players that I'm very, very uh, proud to, to, to share the screen with. And I know people are just absolutely going to love it. Well, it's what exciting. How many episodes are, how many episodes are, is this? The tell them the new one. This this, this show, uh, as it was explained to me to begin with, is 120 episodes. Oh wow! We're yeah. about halfway through the taping process, as it was it. Uh, as it was uh, as slated to us from the beginning. We're about halfway through it. So, Katie, halfway are you are you are you happy? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm ex- she should be. Yes. <laughs> I'm extraordinarily happy, <laughs> Love my it. dear. Love it. I'm very, very happy. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, it's. I, I believe, you know, it was. Um, it was Mark Twain who said. I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I am. I am misquoting. It was Abraham Lincoln, I believe, who said. Close enough. Uh, we are just about as happy as we as we want to be, and I believe that happiness is something that you know is is. There are moments of great joy, but they are few and far between in this life, and that it's extremely important to maintain a positive outlook. That doesn't mean that we have to close our eyes to our reality or anyone else's. Right. It just means that um, no, because that because then you're, then you're 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 flying blind, and that also is that's a false sense of happiness. No, mm-hmm. it's self awareness. It's understanding um, our virtues, and it's understanding our our, our shortcomings, mm-hmm. and it's. But but I believe that it 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 stems first and foremost for from loving others as you would have them uh, love you back, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and trying to be as fair and as kind to every human being that you come in contact with, and that 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 gives you a sense of uh, a, a sense of, of joy. And and, and also and you're lo- you're fortunate to have an amazing mom. We want to give a shout out to Audrey because she's uh, been well, there for you so from yeah, from day she's, one. She's trying to listen. I don't know if she was able to, <laughs> to pick it up right now, but then she'll pick up the podcast. Yeah, she's uh, she's she's. You know, she's my, she's my, she may be my biggest fan and my biggest critic, well, uh, but she is uh, she has never been anything but honest to me yeah. about what she you know what I'm what I'm doing with my career and what I'm doing with uh, with you know my 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 image and everything that I have uh, mm-hmm. accomplished. But I know that she is extremely proud, mm-hmm. and as a child, she taught me everything that I know. And I am forever grateful, and uh, she's very, very important to me. So yeah. we're going to go to Absolutely. break right now. Can you hold on to the line, and we're going to come back and talk uh, hot topics? Yeah, we'd love. There's so much we want to get into. Absolutely. I'm so excited. 
excited. Oh, my God. This is so great. <laughs> Everyone, we're joined by uh, Katie Barberi. We're going to take our first break. You are listening to 101 with Jasper Cole. We'll be right back. 101 with Jasper Cole. All right. That's a little Latin tango. Was that Latin, I think? Tango music? Yeah. JW. Wow. Well, that's in honor of our guest, Katie Barberi. Hi, sweetheart. Welcome back. Is Katie on the line? Yeah, she should be there. Oh. Katie, are you there? I think we Music I, break. I there she is. Here. Oh, so oh there dancing. you are. Okay. Yes. Were you dancing during the break? I was. I was. I was dancing during the uh, Yeah, I thought it was lovely. Thank you so much. I picked it just for you. I, can, I consider that truly a dedication. I was very happy to receive it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good. Well, we're back. Um, I think Dominic wants to talk so politics. I, is that right? Absolutely. Some of our uh, our listeners have been sending us messages to talk about there's been some developments in the world of politics. Yes. Um, so, no, so, Katie, what is your take right now on the presidential race? Well, here's my take. My speaking take of is reality that shows. I will, I will. I'm sorry. I said, speaking of reality shows, our present, our current yeah, situation. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I think. Well, I think it's all very entertaining. Uh, right. <laughs> I think it's all very entertaining. But truth be told, and uh, just just to be honest, um, I, I don't I don't believe there's any reason to speculate on the candidates until there are actual candidates. Right. Um, we don't have candidates yet. What we have is candidates for the candidates. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's it seems as though it's it's been a lot of fun and kind of a three ring circus. Mm-hmm. And it's you know it's 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 great enjoyment and it's fantastic television and there's fodder for publicity everywhere. But uh, there's there's no truth or reality to it as far as you know wh- who is truly going to be taking the reins um, yet until there are uh, candidates and I believe that that's the time kind of to to weigh in specifically on on the well candidates. in the in the last and forgive me if I'm if I'm wrong in the last race um, you you endorsed McCain am I correct I okay. All right, I, I I appreciate this opportunity to clarify. Oh. Uh, thank you so much for bringing that up. Uh, <laughs> that was eight years ago, uh-huh. and uh, I was in Colombia. At the time, I was shooting uh, Doña Barbara, and my mother comes from a long line of Republicans. Uh-huh. Uh, the family is Midwestern, and they are Republican. And for me, it's become kind of a sad state of affairs because... Um, you know, Republicans in the in the eyes and the ears of uh, some people have now become it's become a bad word, as has Democrat or mm-hmm. liberal become a bad word in the eyes and ears of 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 other people. Yeah. And I, I, I feel that I feel that although uh, it's it's great fun and it's interesting and it's passionate, uh, democracy is extremely important. And what is important beyond that is that we remain very, very united. Right. So, having said that, um, my mother called and said that she had spoken to someone. She had been at the, uh, the, the, the campaign headquarters in the uh, town that she lives here in Florida in and uh, had been speaking about my, myself and, and my involvement in, in the Latin market and the fact that I'm an actress in the Latin market and uh and asked if i could be of any service (laughs) (laughs) and so they said absolutely so i i flew in i did do my research on on mr mccain and i felt that he was a lovely gentleman Mm -hmm. and that he had uh, been of great service to the united states his uh, roommate in uh, in the military had been latino and so they uh, spoke to me about how he was very sensitive to the latino cause but here's my concern in hindsight. My concern in hindsight, and I will say this for anyone, any um, celebrity endorsing or speaking about a, uh, a political figure. Number one, we don't have enough information uh, to really make any sort of statement. Mm-hmm. Number two, you know, you can alienate people who believe that because you are endorsing one candidate, perhaps, you have a negative feeling toward uh, certain very, very important social causes. For mm-hmm. instance, by endorsing a Republican candidate, I might have given the impression that I am not sensitive to the immigrants' cause here in the United States. Mm-hmm. I might have given the impression that I'm not sensitive to gay rights. Mm-hmm. I might have given the impression that I'm not sensitive to a woman's right to choose. Right. I will clarify with absolutely no problem 
there could be nothing further from the truth. Right. So uh, did you feel blindsided? Having done that, did you feel blindsided when? Um, did you feel blindsided when Palin joined as his running mate? No, I, but see, I had the information that everyone else had at that time, and a little bit less because I, I had limited access to the internet. We were in Colombia. And I was shooting there. I was shooting six days a week. Yeah. I don't mean Colum- I mean Colombia, the country. <laughs> so I had limited information, and I had seen a couple of rallies. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, you know, and she had a very high, um, she had a very high approval rating. And as uh, she had been governor of Alaska at that time, Alaska, and she had a very high approval rating. That was my understanding. And also, I had seen a couple of rallies in which she had done quite well. Mm-hmm. So I was excited that a woman. I'm very much. Uh, pro women's rights, and I have a jewelry line called Mariposa Katie, and love. it's all about female empowerment. And I want to see women uh, take a, a greater role in politics. I think it's extremely important. And so I was very excited to see a woman running. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything that happened after uh, all of all all of that went down. You know, it's unfortunate. I think that uh, it, politicians, like any other public figure in 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 the press, can be portrayed kind of very one sided and mm-hmm. one dimensional. And I think, I think, uh, I think there's more to any human being. You know, and so it's it's in in hindsight, I would probably never endorse another candidate again. Not because I don't believe in them, but because I know that I may not have enough information, and I would never want anyone that has ever uh, enjoyed a scene that I've done, forget uh, an entire project, a scene that I've done, to misinterpret uh, my endorsement as, as not being sensitive to perhaps mm-hmm. their individual needs or someone they know's individual mm-hmm. needs. It seems to me that it's very sad. Now, if, if you're a Republican, you have to believe in this, 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 mm-hmm. this, and this. And if you're a Democrat, you have to believe in this, 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 and this. Well, I may be a Republican that has a very, I may be a person that has a very, and I'm not saying that that's the case, but as a, as a for instance, I may be a person that has a very um, conservative view about the military mm-hmm. and feels that we need to be, you know, very well armed and that we need to protect ourselves, ourselves, but a very liberal view of, you know, of social issues, right. such as, uh, you know, uh, such as such as a woman's right to choose, such as gay rights, such as the legalization of marijuana. I may be all of those things. I'm not saying that's the case. <laughs> I'm saying I may be all of those things, but because they they you're kind of pigeonholing yourself mm-hmm. into a it's a stereotype of right. what it is that you that you believe in because you endorse any one person. Mm-hmm. I would never do it again. And speaking I of in, it speaking of endo- speaking of endorsements, um, pa- speaking of endorsements, last night Palin gave her endorsement for Trump. Do you think, in your opinion, that's going to yeah. help or hurt him? <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a question that I feel, I feel somewhat comfortable with answering, honestly. Um, I, I, I feel that the people that, uh, Mr. Trump speaks to, uh, I feel that that's how they speak kind of in their living rooms, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, and that they're hearing kind of the rhetoric that they, that they've heard in, in their homes and in their, in their personal lives. So perhaps that's what he's connecting to. Mm-hmm. Maybe, um, I don't, I don't know. I believe that whoever it is that's following him probably will continue to follow him until he says or does something that mm-hmm. actually offends them in some way. You know, and, and, uh, there and, are groups that have been, you know, I, I don't, I don't know really what what impact. Uh, and what, what is your is when you hear Trump and some of his outlandish, ridiculous statements, especially on immigration? In, in immigration, what it, what is your initial reaction? How would you respond to that? Um, it's very simple. I have, as, as a, as a Mexican American, a very proud Mexican American, I have run the gamut of social cultural, uh, knowledge. I have been privy to that. And I believe that knowledge is power and the power that it has given me is objectivity. Why? Because I feel that there are a lot of people, um, right wing Republican people that I know in my life that it's not that they're bad people, it's that they're ignorant Mm -hmm. about the struggle of the immigrant in the United States. There is no one that I know personally that, uh, and I know many immigrants uh, to this country, I know many people when I was living in Mexico who planned on immigrating. Um, 
you know, I, I'm not speaking of the quote-unquote criminals that come across this country, and I know that, you know, on, on a broader term, they're, they're referring also to criminals that may be coming from other countries and trying to cross through Mexico. Mm-hmm. I get all of that, and I'm sensitive to all of that, but the immigrants that I know were born into a situation that they felt they could not get out of mm-hmm. in their country, and they want a better life for themselves and their family. Having said that, I have met nobody that does not respect this country to the utmost. I have met and know no one who is an immigrant who doesn't love this country as much or more as anyone I know that was, that was born here. Mm-hmm. And I know no one who is not willing to work one, two, three, five, seven jobs if it's necessary to take advantage of this beautiful, beautiful democratic uh, system that we have here in the United mm-hmm. States. Right. So it's very sad for me that people don't, that there are certain people that don't understand that. And, so, and it's just because they don't know. So, right. so, so Katie, um, if, if, I, if, if Trump was here, what would you say to him? As, as you know... Who does your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I'm looking for a recommendation. I don't know if that's um, anyway. Um, I would say I would like to introduce you to a couple of people that I know. Right. Mm-hmm. And I would like you to meet them, and I would like you to hear their stories. Absolutely. And if after you hear their stories, you feel the same way, then at least I have given you some information. Perhaps, and I'm not saying that he doesn't. Perhaps that you may not have. Well, absolutely. And one thing I wanted to bring up to you also, because uh, you're a veteran uh, Latino telenovela star, there's a, a a fellow star in the news lately, Kate Del Castillo. Do you know Kate? Have you worked with Kate? I do. Um, I call her I call her La Tocaya. We have called each other La Tocaya for almost 20 years. Tocaya in Spanish means, you know, when you're when when you have the same name. Right. So if you have a, a, a if if you meet a Jasper, then he's your Tocayo. Got it. Uh, she's uh, she is Kate. I'm Catherine, but I have been called Kate many times. I'm Katie, and she's just straight up Kate. K A T E. That's her name. But we we are Tocayas. I worked with her on Alguna vez tendremos alas, and uh, I had an amazing time working with her. I knew at that time that she was going to be. Uh, a, a, a very she was already she was a protagonist of the show and uh, a very big star and uh, yeah, yeah had a great time working with her and, and she well she's in the news right now she's being investigated because of her involvement with El Chapo and the story that came out with Sean Penn in the interview with Rolling Stone um, yeah what, what what are some of the what are some how of the, is that resonating I guess in the, the Latin market I'm just curious because I have friends that worked with Kate here on I mean people love her she's an amazing talent she did a movie called K11 with uh, Kristen Stewart's mom directed that we have mutual friends that we're in. She's quite a talent, but it's just fascinating how, with she all of her years of talented. all of her years of working, the now in the the American market is suddenly getting to know her. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, but you know around this whole Sean Penn El Chapo situation. Well, so. see that that to me is very unfortunate. Right. She's uh, you know she's she has been acting professionally for twenty five years, and I'm sorry about everything that's going on. I, you know, I, I weighing in, I'm very surprised at all the people that have weighed in that can't possibly know because mm. they weren't there mm-hmm. exactly what has gone on. Right. So right. I won't do that. What I can say is that I have, uh, you know, a, a, a number of, you know, memories that I will never forget, memories that are, that are unique and, and that are very, very special of an extraordinary talent, an amazing, intelligent woman with a fantastic sense of humor who is uh, very strong and ambitious, I believe, in a, in a positive way, and who is trying to open up, uh, you know, uh, production for women and for Latinas in uh, L.A., and she has been working very, very closely with the most important uh, Latin figures in the industry mm-hmm. for many, many years. And, uh, you know, I, I admire my, my, my true hope, my true hope is that she and her family, who have never treated me with anything but kindness and who are a lovely, you know, united family and very talented, uh, intelligent, uh, truly lovely people, I just hope that they're doing well and I wish them the very best. And, I, I, you know, it's, it's, they say all this scrutiny in the end is just, um, it's just publicity and I believe that that's true. I'm sure that, you know, she tweeted, uh, you know, a short time ago that she would be, she's looking forward to telling her side of the story. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that um, her side of the story will reflect 
the person that she that I that we have all known and admired for so long. Uh, there's a, a an excellent Mexican actor comedian by the name of Eugenio Derbez, mm-hmm. who has done uh, several films uh, here in the United States. The latest of which was in 2013. He produced and starred in a film called Instructions Not Included. And he weighed in the other day, and I saw his interview, and I thought that what he said was the most intelligent thing I've heard said about this so far. He said that. She is an extraordinary talent, as have I, that she's a beautiful human being, uh, that perhaps, perhaps might have gotten some bad advice. But mm. beyond that, uh, there, there are no criticisms of this lovely lady. She's somebody that I'm so happy to have worked with and somebody that I have always admired. And, and I just think, you know, she's awesome. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited for her to get the opportunity to so. Well, like we said, I, my my greatest hope now is, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. I'm just hoping that in the American market now, this is going to bring her big opportunities so people can get to see her no, talent. No, no, and, and the thing is, as it brings her big opportunities, she will, she will, she will make sure that those opportunities uh, open up other uh, Latin actors' opportunities uh, in the United States market. And yes. that's something that... You know, so many Latino actors that I know, and myself, of course, everyone uh, has always has that goal. You know, uh, Hollywood is an extraordinary place to work, and it's a, it's, you know, it's the greatest production in the world, the biggest production in the world, the most expensive productions in the world, and and the, you know, the deepest, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the the projects that are getting greenlit. There's there's everything from a Revenant, which is an extra. I think visually, it's the most stunning film I've ever seen. No mm. question. Yeah, I'm waiting no to see that and, one for sure. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh, it's just—it's extraordinary visually. I, I've there some of some of his some of their takes truly. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. But also, you know, films films about people, films about uh, the the you know the human condition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, television I think is getting more more intelligent. The a, writing. A film is about your life would be would be fascinating. I think <laughs> your story. No, I mean your well, story you so is. Much. I mean, it's compelling. It's fascinating. I think it's. I mean, it's rare and it's unique. But it's so and, ongoing. She's going to have to wait and write that story 30 years from now because she's well, just getting know, started. But hopefully I we'll see you on Dancing with the Stars soon. Oh, let's put that out there. What's that? Hopefully we'll see you on Dancing with the Stars what soon. What Dancing with the Stars. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> now, why would you say a thing like that? <laughs> Are you putting out there that that's my dream or something? Well, you know, when I'm on my treadmill, I, am, I imagine myself on Dancing with the Stars and that gets me through the workout. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's definitely. Well, cool. at least if it's you got exciting. on there, they would finally have a real celebrity on the show. Oh well, oh come <laughs> on now. No, it, it would it would it would truly be an honor. It is is absolutely one of my dreams. I don't even know what what uh, what I'd be what 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 I what I would possibly be doing there. I get nervous just thinking about it. But if I could request Tony Davalani as my partner, if I could go ahead and do that, that would be great. We'll put that Can out there. Can I go there. ahead and do yes. that officially? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, I'd like Tony Davalani there. as my partner. So, so, so remind so us much. remind us when everybody could tune in to see your new novella which premieres on the 26th, correct? What uh, hang on one second. We got what's that? What Craig says, Craig Hurley says, my fiance Oh, he's like, you don't want Derek Huff? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you would take Derek, <laughs> but Derek. you would take Tony. you take either I, I one. Know, absolutely. Anybody would, please. Yes. You know, but, uh, but anyway, I am so sorry, my dear. What was that last thing that you So said? we just want to make sure everyone gets the dates to see the new telenovela starting on... Oh, please, please. We go on the air on Telemundo on January 26th, and uh, I'm so excited. It's truly, it's an extraordinary cast. And, uh, and it's an extraordinary, uh, it's, it's a story about, uh, May, December romances and are they, are they possible? Are they not? But, uh, there are so many stories interwoven with it. It's, I think, I think that the, the audience is really, really going to love it. And we're, we're excited. We're very excited. And also, do you, uh, you have your website as well, right, Katie? Well, I have a, I do. I have a jewelry line. It's called Mariposa Katie. You can get it at Mariposa, M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A, Katie, K-A-T-I-E, mm-hmm. dot com. And, uh, we, they are, they are pieces that are hand, uh, they're bronze and they are hand soldered, hand painted, uh, pieces that are, uh, butterflies. But in, in, in the center, instead of the worm, if you will, because that's truly what's in the center of a butterfly, it is a silhouette of a woman and she holds the world in her hand, the world in her hand. And you have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well, correct? 
Absolutely. I'm at Katie Barberi on Twitter. I am Instagram. I am at the real Katie Winky. <laughs> and on uh, Facebook, it's Katie Barberi uh, dash actriz, A C T R I Z. So, uh, yeah, you can check me out on any of those. On any of those. I love social networks because I love to be in, in constant touch with. Uh, you know, I, I I hate the word fans because I feel very privileged when anyone contacts me, whether I know them personally or not. I choose to think of them as people I've been lucky enough to have watch me doing any of, of the things I love to do so much. So. Well, listen, my dear, the hour goes by way, way too fast. It is so great to hear your voice. Congratulations on everything. Much continued uh -huh. success and love to you. And please, when you're next time you're in Hollywood, we'd love to have you live in the studio. If we can see your beautiful face. Oh my God! I I have to tell you, it has been such a pleasure to hear your voices. I miss you both so much. I can't wait to see you in person. And it is an honor to have done this interview with you. And I, I I'm I'm thrilled that you called me. And thank you so so much. Oh bless right, you. Much you. love to your mom as well and to Craig. Thank you so much, Katie. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. That's the wonderful Katie Barberi. Wow, the hour flies by, doesn't it, guys? It does. We covered so we much. We covered so much. <laughs> so we will be here next week, same time, same place. And remember, the uh, show is on iTunes and Stitcher and Spreaker. Next week, we have the star from VH1's number one. Hit the Floor. Hit the Floor scripted series, um, Jonathan McDaniel. McDaniel, who's also a singer. And an actor. Little J, you may know him Little from Jay. That's a Raven. Right. And it's going to be our Hot Topic show with uh, Dara and Ralph, so we'll have a full jam-packed show. So thanks, everyone. JW, Dominic, peace out. You've been listening to 101 with Jasper Cole. Thank you. Thanks for checking out 101 on One with Jasper Cole. Check out past episodes and get the latest as they're released. Subscribe today on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube.